All right, let's look at another swing that you'll recognize. Slamming Sammy Sneed. Now, if you look at the way I've drawn the lines on the left side of the screen, it might appear a little bit odd to you because it would appear that Sneed's feet are aiming way off to the right. And you would think that, well, this is Sam Sneed. Why would he be doing that? So let's look at it this way. First of all, you can see the left edge of the green is over here by this bunker. Now, here's the ball. Now, I'm going to draw a line up as the ball flies off here. So we'll look at that. So there's the line of the ball. Now, if I take this right foot and draw the same angle, there it is right there. So you can see Sneed's right foot is drawn about as far off the line as Trevino drew his left foot off the line. So if we look at, if we look at the swing with that frame of reference here, I think we're going to get a much better idea than most about how Sneed's swing actually worked. So I'm going to draw the same boxes. And now we're going to watch the swing unfold. Now if we look at it from the front angle, we'll notice that he does have the ball almost right up to his heel. Right foot flared well out. He certainly wasn't going to restrict any hip turn, especially with that setup. So you see a little, a little bump to the right with the hips in the backswing, and the head stays mostly in the box. A slight bit of right movement and a little bit of lowering. Left heel comes off the ground, very free movement of the trunk. Upper trunk controlling the takeaway. Not a lot of hand movement early. So you can see that when he got up where his left arm is parallel, the club is really about there, not quite cocked. Very mobile upper body and lower body here. So look at the club getting way, way below parallel. Now the right hip is still inside the line, so he's definitely not rolling outside. His head's in the box. Now he's going to make his move forward. And you can see relative to some of the other players we've looked at, not nearly as much forward movement of the hips, although from where he was to get over to there is quite a bit, but the, the net movement, a little more rotational now. And you can also see the straightening of the left leg hard as the ball is struck, right at impact, or just past it, fully straightening the left leg. Now on the backswing, you can see that right leg pull back. If we look at it from the right, from behind, in this particular picture, the knee is almost straight. He almost locks it. But you can see lowering that we saw with everybody so far. Depth in the right hip. And you can see the symmetry of the legs. top position. This was the backswing. Now, notice the depth of the backswing here. Almost on one plane from address to left arm parallel. You won't see that very much. But all of these things are really made this way by this alignment factor. Now, from up here, the reason why Sneed had to rotate more than most guys is if he drove forward, 
as he would have from a square stance, he would hit everything way off to the right. So what he had to do was rotate, square up the lower body, let the upper body pull around, out and around a bit, at which point he could somehow drop his hands again right onto the magic spot, which is right on that shaft plane approach. There he goes. So pretty amazing. He could get his forearm back on plane, his hands in the in the shaft, right dead on the shaft plane again, and finish on around. And notice the hips again. You see a recurring theme here, deep and back in the box. And notice how long the head stays out over the ball. So one of the old writers for Golf Magazine or Golf Digest, Bob Verde, termed Sneed a pull hitter. And you can see why he said that. He's aiming well right, pulled the club behind him, let it come back in front of him, and then got it on back around. Pretty amazing. Again, what most people think of when they think of Sneed is the syrupy fluidness of the motion, but a fairly unique technique and incredibly athletic and powerful.